In this video, we're going to be looking at taking higher order derivatives. So, what we did previously was that we would take uh, the position function and differentiate it to get the velocity function. Okay? We can also get the acceleration function by differentiating the velocity function. So, if you start with position and take the derivative, you're going to get velocity. But if you take the derivative of velocity, you're going to get the acceleration. So another way of looking at this is that you can find the acceleration by differentiating the position twice. Okay, so what we're going to say is that that acceleration function A is actually the second derivative of the position. Okay, and it's denoted by S double prime. Now we don't say S double prime, we just say second derivative. Now the second derivative is a higher order derivative, and you can find derivatives for pretty much any positive integer order. All right, third derivative, fifth derivative, 27th derivative, it doesn't matter. However, because we're using these prime notations, it does get a little wieldy if you start talking about really higher order derivatives. So this is how we're going to write our derivatives. y prime, f prime, dy dx, d dx of f of x, and then dxy. These are our first derivatives. The second derivative, we add an extra prime for our primes. When we write it in dy dx, we take the second derivative, right? So it's d2y over dx squared, or d2 dx squared f of x. This is y because this is the symbol for second derivative. The y is what we're taking the derivative of, right? Or in this case, the f of x. So we always have a couple of people that ask me, well, why is the 2 on the d on the top and the x on the bottom? And it's really not on the x, it's really on the dx, okay, because x and dx are not separate. dx is the term, so we're really not saying dx squared, we're saying dx squared. Uh, you don't have to have the parentheses because it's kind of understood that d and x are together. And here, the d is really, I'm saying I'm taking the derivative of y. So it's actually the 2 is on the d as opposed to the y, and it's easier to see when you look at it like this. Now the third derivative, we still use 3 prime, so y triple prime, f triple prime, d3y dx3, these are all the same. Now, when we jump to the fourth derivative, we're going to start putting things in parentheses. So y to the fourth in parentheses power, we're just going to call that the fourth derivative. We don't say y to the fourth parentheses power or anything like that. That's not, because this is not to a power. This is just a superscript. And in this case, a parentheses number superscript just dictates that it's going to be a higher order derivative. So we put the parentheses for this. All of the, when it's written as dy dx, we never have to put any parentheses on anything because it was always just numbers. It's only when we jump from primes to numbers where we have to put them in parentheses. So let's look at example four. Because the moon doesn't have an atmosphere, a falling object on the moon has no air resistance. Okay, so in 1971, an astronaut, David Scott, demonstrated that when you drop a feather and a hammer at the same time, they're going to fall at the same rate on the moon. Now. This is because of negligible air resistance. On Earth, if you drop a feather and you drop a hammer, they're going to fall at a different rate because the feather is going to kind of glide down because it has so much surface area and so little mass that the air resistance really keeps it from going straight down. But with no air resistance on the moon, or if you've ever seen the uh, vacuum experiments where they put a put this stuff in a vacuum and flip it upside down and they fall, it's because there's no air resistance. So the position function for these falling objects can be given by negative 0.81 t squared plus 2. In this case, s is the height in meters and t is the time in seconds. Now, the question I want to know is what is the ratio of Earth's gravitational force to the moon's? So, to find the acceleration, we need to differentiate the position function twice. Because what is gravitational force? We talked about this in a previous. The g is acceleration. Gravity is an acceleration. So we know Earth's gravity. I hope we know Earth's gravity. We talked about it in class. g is equal to 32 feet per second squared or 9.8 meters per second squared. Since we're talking about meters here, we're going to use the 9.8 meters per second squared. So let's find out what the acceleration is 
due to this position. So we know that the acceleration is the second derivative. So we're going to start with the first derivative, which is going to give us 2 times negative 0.81, which is negative 1.62t. Acceleration, and this is velocity, right? Acceleration, I don't know why I've got a prime there, is equal to the first derivative of velocity or the second derivative of position, which are both the same thing. Guys, these are not two different things. The first derivative of velocity, second derivative of position. Still going to get you to A. So basically, we're just taking the derivative of this, which is negative 1.62. So that gives us the acceleration on the moon. So the question asks for the ratio of Earth to the moon. So Earth is 9.8, and that acceleration, that negative means going down. So 9.8 versus... 1.62, we can simplify that down. Let's see what we get. 9.8 divided by 1.62, roughly six times the gravity, 6.04 over one. So you've always heard that the gravity of the moon is about one sixth that of the earth. Well, we just showed uh, given this position function that that's uh, the case, we see that the Earth has six times the gravitation that the moon does. So if you have any questions about higher order derivatives, please shoot me a reminder or ask a question in class.